Well, folks, it's 201, so I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, and uh, so just to make sure you're in the right place, we're going to be talking about from photos to books and calendars and, and other kinds of things. Basically talking about how to convert some of your photos into something that you might share uh, or gift or whatever. Okay. Um, the, um, I'm going to talk about Shutterfly, uh, not because it doesn't have competitors. If you've been around it all, you know that Costco and Google Photos and Mixbook and Snapfish and Walmart and others. <laughs> By the way, I'm going to go ahead and, and mute everybody. Thank you. But what I invite you to do is to, um, let me make sure I'm unmuted. What I invite you to do is if you have a question, go ahead and unmute yourself and then mute yourself afterwards. So I'm happy to take questions, but this way there's a little less background noise. So anyhow, um, Shutterfly has competition. There are many other uh, sources of getting uh, your photos into books and calendars, et cetera. I, I'm only talking about Shutterfly because it's the one I have experience with. I used to use one called My Publisher, and it went out of business or got bought out or consumed by someone else. I'm not even sure who. So I, uh, in the last uh, year or two, I've been using exclusively Shutterfly. The um, couple of things I, I like about Shutterfly, uh, they guarantee satisfaction. And the way I can demonstrate that is I ordered a puzzle uh, that I'll show you a little bit later. And it came in and um, some of the pieces weren't fully separated. There was paper at the back that connected. I'd never had that happen because I've ordered several puzzles through them. But this particular one, uh, they weren't fully separated. So I contacted them and they sent me a new one. No questions asked, no charge. They just sent me a, a replacement for it. They also have discounts pretty much consistently you can either get 50% uh, off of this product or you'll get uh, extra pages free. Uh, lots, of, lots of different discounts are available. They also offer a wide range of products, including prints. They will do like regular prints, um, four by sixes or five by sevens or whatever you choose. But they'll also do uh, poster size prints, which is kind of nice sometimes. And you can do, of course, the photo books, uh, cards and stationery, uh, calendars and gift items like mugs and uh, water bottles and uh, puzzles and things of that sort. Uh, they also have even have, you can even create a little step stool that has a, an imprint, a photo or design on it. So they have a lot of, a lot of options available. And the ones on, the, on this slide, the ones in bold face are the ones that I've actually Done myself uh, the photo books and the calendars and mugs and, and puzzles. So I want to give you the, the basic steps. And these apply to most uh, of the products they have, although um, it's more probably more specific to, um, to the, the photo books and to the uh, calendars. First step is create a, a Shutterfly account. And it, it costs nothing to create an account. Uh, what it may do is you might start getting some more email in your inbox, uh, but um, you do need to create an account, log in, and then you can explore, and I'm gonna show you here in a second, how to explore a variety of different projects that you might be interested in. And we'll, we'll cover those, like for instance, the mugs and the photo books and the calendars and the posters and all that sort of thing. Once what I do is I typically gather all the photos I want to use in a specific product or project into a single folder on my hard drive. Or if you're using a, a tablet like an iPad or, or a, a phone, gather them into a single album. You can create an album that doesn't move the, the photos out of the, uh, your whole your uh, camera roll but simply duplicates them in a, an album that you designate to name as you wish. The point is to get all the photos into a single site 
on your hard drive or on your tablet so that you can upload them easily. And I'll, I'll show you that in, during the process of the hour here. So then you, you want to upload them. And I'll, I'll step back to step three. Um, I have not done it, but I've, I've seen where some people have wanted to do an annual book each uh, and have the annual book include um, photos from each month of the year, January through December. And so I've seen their advice is that you simply create a folder for each of those months, put the, the pictures you want in there, and then um, upload them one at a time so they end up being in, in chronological order so you can more easily put your, your book together. Now, let me mention, with Shutterfly, you can upload a picture one at a time. You can go search through your entire hard drive and find the image you want. But to me, it's easier to get those all gathered together, either in a file folder or in an album, before you start, start, before you start your project. So after you upload the photos, then you select the template you're going to use. Each template's a little bit different. There's a lot of variety in the options you can select. And you, you place the photos. Now, Shutterfly actually has some options to create uh, a book automatically where it will put them in place, put your photos in place. Uh, in other words, there are some automatic processes where you don't have to place them one by one by one. Uh, and even in those cases, you can rearrange and uh, make it the way you want. After placing the photos, you want to go in and you can add text if you want, although some people want just a basically a coffee table book with just images, no text. And you can do that, but you can also add text and you can add embellishments. Um, and finally, after all that, you can review it, save it, and add it to your cart. And then, of course, they'll want your credit card. So that's that's the basic process that you go through with most of the projects, more specifically the photo book, but with most of the projects. So let me share the Shutterfly site. Um, if you can hopefully follow my, my cursor, my pointer up here, here's the list of different kinds of products that you can create. And it goes all the way from the photo books and a wide variety to cards and stationery to prints, gifts, which include things like ceramic mugs and playing cards and puzzles. Uh, there's also wall decor, uh, wall decor, which includes, um, I can't remember what they're calling. I think they're calling them like floating picture frames. You can take multiples and put them, uh, create a, an, a group of them on your wall. Their wedding options, including programs and menus and um, invitations, calendars, and then they've got kids items. You can create some books. It's less, these would be less um, putting your photos in, but simply making a photo book or a little children's book that would include like a grandchild's name. They would become the main character in, in the, the book. But, there's a whole variety of, of items that they have. And also, you also want to look at the deals. This is what I was talking about with, with Shutterfly. Every, I, I have never been on their site when they didn't have a deal. Uh, and you can see here, well, I'll, be, I'll hover, hover over deals. You can see they have 50% off on gifts and 50% off on cards and unlimited free photo book pages uh, if you simply use the code unlimited. Now. These are always coming, going on and coming off. I think the current set ends March 3rd, which would be tomorrow. But I can tell you for sure, as sure as the sun rises in the morning, that they will have deals the next day. And so you always want to be looking for deals. And I, I never, ever, ever pay full price on their site. I'm always looking for whatever deal might be available. Okay, I want to move over here under, this is my account. This is a web page, by the way, accessible um, from pretty much any browser, any mobile device, your desktop, your laptop, whatever. Under um, 
Hi, Jonathan here. If I click on it, you can see there's an order history, but what I'm gonna to jump to is my projects. So I can give you a sense of what some of these projects look like. Here's, here's a photo book. I can go into this, and if I wanted to modify this and print it again, I could do that. Uh, this one has already been printed and we've made several copies and given them to, uh, to the family. I'm going to go up to full screen on this. Uh, actually, I'm going to have to reshuffle here. Here we go. So what you can do, you can tell you can include photos and text. You can change the font also. Notice that you've got a different style uh, border and you can change the borders. You can have multiple pictures on a page. Have a full page, one that covers a single page as well as a, a two page spread. Add in as much text as you want or as little as you want. And so literally, I can on screen scroll through and see what this is going to look like uh, when I when it's printed. And you can see here's a photo that basically leads across two pages. Now, off to the side here, you'll see all kinds of different uh, spreads, photo spreads, and you can select any of these that you want. I used a wide variety of them. You can also not notice down the bottom, here's a list or a, a thumbnail, thumbnails of all the photos that are included in here. Notice a little orange check box. Once I placed a, a photo in an album, that little check box appears. I can use this slider here to hide the used ones. And you can see there are some photos in that I uploaded that I did not use in this particular project. If I want to see what's in there, again, I can uncheck it. You can also uh, delete uh, an image simply by checking on it. You can add another image to it. If that image is not placed the way you want it to, you can do a double click. And by place, I mean, I should say cropped. If it's not cropped the way you want it to, you can change the shape of, of the cropping. Now that's not the best picture for this location, but because it's more horizontal rather than vertical. But you can also, with just a, a click up here, make it black and white, sepia toned. You can make it kind of vintage, more vibrant. You have all these options. You can also get rid of red eye if that's an issue with a little button up here. So they've got a lot of self editing tools even with, within it. And when you're done, you simply click done, or in this case, I'm just going to cancel back out. Um, if I were to want to add pages, I can do that. I can also add photos. Down here is a little plus sign, which allows me to go and choose photos to upload. Or I can choose uh, either photos or folders. And notice to the side, too, these, are, these uh, by default, it picks up photos that are on my computer. But I also have the option to go to Google Photos or to Facebook if you have uploaded, have mobile apps, that you've, uh, mobile photos that you've uploaded or Instagram uh, and other sites. Uh, I, I do all mine off the, the desktop. So I'm going to leave this, go back up to the main page and it's telling me it's going to not save any of the changes and that's the way I want it. <laughs> um, if I go under my account again, back to projects, I'll show you another project I, I built. Um, the most recent one is this one. It's a 114 piece puzzle. And you can see it again along the bottom, you can see the images that were used. In this particular case, I used all the ones I uploaded except for one. I added the text in the middle and that text can be edited. Uh, I can decide that Dakota has two Ks in her name and 
Callie has two L's or whatever, whatever I choose to do. So it's all editable. I can also rearrange these photos by simply clicking and dragging. I can move them to new locations. And um, I can also click on it. And once again, I can change how it's, it's cropped. I want it a little bit more this way uh, and I can make it black and white. And when I'm done, and, and if the picture comes in sideways, I can rotate it. I can rotate it 90, degree, 90 degrees plus or minus. And I'm gonna go ahead and make that done so you can see here that it's, uh, it's not black and white. This may look somewhat grainy to you. And the reason is because it's a puzzle. I don't know if you can start seeing some of the puzzle pieces. So it actually breaks it up into puzzle pieces and, and shows you generally what, what it will look like. I'm gonna again, go back out, not save it. And let's look at another option, another project here. This one is desk calendar. And I wanted to send something to my sister uh, and uh, for, for Christmas. And so I made up a poster with all sorts of photos from when we were children. Notice that I have an option now, since we're already into March, I can change the start date. Now this particular one starts in January, but I could have it run, you know, April to, uh, April to March uh, or whatever, at any 12 months I want, I'm gonna just not change it again. They've got several varieties of, of calendars. This particular one has the spiral binding and the base of it sets flat, uh, it folds flat so that it stands up. Um, my one complaint with this, even though I bought one for myself and one for my brother after I bought it for my sister, <laughs> is this one's not quite as stable as some of the other ones. They have some that uh, stand in a, a wood block, but it's a, uh, uh, this is a cover design here. And so now I can go to January and you can see along the top here, you can see where we're looking at each month and jump to March, which is my sister's birthday. And so I put a photo of her as a child. You can also navigate with the little arrow keys up here. You know, go to you know, April, May, etc., And it builds in, you all, it builds in the calendar dates, but you also have an option uh, of what day you want the week to start on. And you can add all these different um, uh, embellishments on the side. I thought watermelon and strawberries look like summer. So I, I use that. Uh, August, some flowers and all, some trees. November has the pumpkins and all but you've got many other options too. Notice on the side here that I could have gone to a full page image, which obviously in this case doesn't work because it, you know, it doesn't have a white background for little letters. You can go to a kind of a tilted one, but you've got all these different page layouts. Notice also in, in the photo book as well as in the calendar and many of the different um, projects, you have the option of saying, I want three pictures on this, on this particular screen. Now, uh, I think on a calendar like this and this size, I think it's kind of counterproductive, but in a photo book, you may very well want three, four or five pictures and you've got those options. Uh, I don't know if you can see the numbers across the top here, but they basically indicate how many photos will go on to that page. And the, the trick is, you always want to look at the shape uh, that these uh, appear in. For instance, in this particular one that I've highlighted, uh, you can see that two of the photos are kind of portrait mode. They're more up and down, more vertical. Two of them are more square. And so if you have photos that are definitely landscape in mode, you don't want to try to force them into a, a vertical or portrait mode and vice versa. The other thing, mentioned the backgrounds. 
you can click on the backgrounds over here, you can see each of these different backgrounds. And here's one, the, I use it for February. So you can see a better image of it there. You've got leaves for a fall date. Uh, don't ask me what the flamingo, what month that goes with, I'm not sure I know. But you've got quite a, a variety of backgrounds for each of the, the calendar entries here. Once again, along the bottom are all the thumbna thumbnails of the images I have uh, pulled in or uploaded to Shuttle, Shuttlefly. And um, if I select this little slider, it will show me the ones that I did not use. If I wanted to change, I would simply pull and drag it up here and make the change. Um, same thing here. That one doesn't quite work. Again, you can double click it. You can recrop it and done. So you have, you have the option to reshape um, or crop the photos as you go along. I'm going to go ahead and leave this again, not save my changes. And I'm going to go to my projects uh, one more time here. We've hit puzzles, we've hit photo books, uh, we've hit, hit the calendars. <clears throat> and I'm going to go down a, for Christmas, last two Christmases, we did uh, a bunch of um, mugs. And I'm going to take a chance on this one. There's a slight difference in, in the mugs and the way they show them to you. Um, let's see if this will do it. I'm gonna go in the upper right hand corner, you can see you can add it to your cart if you have it ready, or you can preview it. Uh, yeah, this doesn't. The more recently what they do, and I don't know why they made this change, is that on the mug, it will show you what the whole wraparound looks like. So as you, where if I turn the mug around, you would see this image and it would uh, connect on the right and left. What I want to show you, and sometimes they do this and sometimes they don't, and that's, I haven't quite figured it out yet. Uh, I'm gonna go down to projects, go down to the very end here, to page two. Here's another mug. And in this particular case, when we preview it, it will let us rotate it around. Now, I don't know if that's just a feature they decided to discontinue or they're, I'm not quite sure why that is. One will do that and the other one won't. But um, to me, it's kind of nice to be able to have the thing rotate and see totally what it looks like. Okay, I'll go back out. And do you have any questions, anyone, before I forge forward? I do. Go ahead. So the, um, the mugs, for instance, does the, do you have a problem with the images uh, if you put the mug in the dishwasher? Or have, have you experienced that at all? So they, they'd be hand-washed. We ordered um, a set of mugs, the black mug mugs, I think it was two years ago, two Christmases ago. And they have started to fade. Uh, we used them in the dishwasher. Um, got the new set, and we've had them since Christmas and have not had not any problem. Um, I, to be honest, I don't remember if they said their dishwasher is safe or not. They may have said that said that they were not, and we simply didn't listen. But oh. uh, we did have the first set uh, fade, and the second set we haven't, but we've been still dishwasher, dishwashing them. Okay. We're lazy, and <laughs> so right. we put them in the dishwasher. Okay. So. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, um, yes. I have gone through on some photos and put text on the photos already. Should I not do that? Should I wait till they're in Shutterfly and add the text? Or does, does it stay or does it move around? 
Uh, I would I would not put your text on the photo. If, if you're saying you're editing the photo outside of uh, Shutterfly, is that what you're saying? Yes. I, I, I wouldn't bother doing that. You wouldn't, okay. I would wait and actually do it when you're in uh, in Shutterfly itself because you have the ability, even if the design doesn't include text, you can add text to any any page in any template. Of course, you gotta be sure there's some space for it to, to be visible, uh, but other than that, it, it will it'll work. <clears throat> and one more then, if the best way to download selected pictures, um, from my phone, is it to put them on the computer or what is the best way to do that? Um, you can work it either either way. Um, you're, now you're not really downloading, you're uploading to Shutterfly. Right. So okay. what happens is when you, you can download them to your computer. If you do any, if you do any way, then you wanna go ahead and download them and sort them the way you normally do. Okay. Uh, or I'm hoping that this will show. So let me let me give it a try here. Um, How many pictures I can have out there? I'm going to try to hmm. you know, did you say that? No. Jonathan, how many pictures can I have out there in one book? Um. Well, the the bigger question is how few can you have? You want to have at least about twenty, but they. I have 61 pages. Let me let me show you another, and I'll come back to the other thing I was going to show you. But let me show you another project here. Um, mm -hmm. Here's my daughter's uh, wedding album from this past January, from a, a year ago this January. Uh, I'm not sure. It, uh, yeah, it does too. It tells me I got to have 114 photos in there. Okay. So, and you can see, by the way, this thing is an embellishment and uh, you can see the difference in the background, the wood grain. And here's another embellishment here. When we talk about adding embellishments, that's what we're talking about. This is text I added. Um, again, here's an embellishment, here's text. That text and those embellishments were not automatically on those particular pages. Okay. So I, I simply added them on. Now I'm going to stop sharing for a second and see if I can show you something here. Bring up my, my file explorer and I think I'll be able to show this to you. Okay. This might be hard to see, um, but this is the way I organize my my photos on my on my hard drive. Uh, so I've got from 2007 all the way through to 2021, and under let's go to 2020 because it's a complete year. Oops. And I have them sorted. By January, February, March, etc. But I, if I start with the January, then um, they're going to be out of chronological order. So I always precede it by the number of the month: 01, 02, 03, all the way up to eleven and twelve. Okay. Each of those has photos from that month. Um, what I was referring to earlier is that you could do the same sort of thing where you, if you're doing an annual photo book. If you wanted to have something that had represent your best photos from January, February, March, all the way through December, you could do the same sort of thing. Simply uh, copy them into those folders, set up the, the set of folders, copy the photos in, the ones you want to use or you think you might want to use, and then you can import those one folder or multiple folders at a time. And what it does is it, it lets you do some of the sorting uh, before beforehand before you uh, get into into Shutterfly. Now that does not mean you can't rearrange pages and photos and everything in Shutterfly because you can. When I imported 
the photos that I had set up for this wedding album, most of them were ones that were dated. And so they, they went into chronological order. There were a group that were not. And so I had, to re, I had to simply pull them, drag them here and there to put them into the order I wanted so that the, so that the album would run uh, basically in a chronological order. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, let's go back to here. Okay. Uh, any other questions at this point? Off to the side, I'm assuming you can see this, that the layouts, I'm way off here on the left-hand side. The layouts are like they were for the calendar. You have all these different options, anywhere from one to five plus images or photos per, per page. Uh, you can add text. You have some text options uh, and you can do spreads. These, you remember the one photo I showed you that kind of bled across the center fold? That's that particular layout there. Or you can have a full two page layout. In this one, uh, I'm trying to think how far. Jonathan, show us how you add the text. Okay. Okay. Um, sure. Let me uh, let me come back to that in just one second here. I'm just trying to look for a full page. Oh, there it is. Oh, I went too far. Okay, there's that one layout that basically leads across both play, both pages. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is add. First of all, some of these pages are already built to have text in them. And that's the easiest way to add the text. You simply drag this over, and I now have a new page. Okay. Notice that there's a space down here. And once I click on it, it allows me to type in um, whatever I choose to put in there. And I can center the text. I can have it left aligned. Uh, and notice that it's not changing in the box here on the left-hand side, but it's changing down here under the photo. In this particular case, it's probably better to, to center it. <laughs> um, I can change the typeface, whatever I choose. I can change the size. I can also type in here, uh, click and type or come down and select uh, the size. I can also change the color. Um, so you, you've got a lot of options as far as the text. That's the easiest way to add text in. You can also, uh, I'm gonna go over this page now and drag in. Okay, now I can add text here. If I remember how to do this, because most of the time I just use the other. Going to advanced editing, and I think this is where I can add some, a text box. Uh, yeah, here we go. It's up top here. Here's our text box. I'm just going to drag it, select it. Well, and oh, here we go. Here we go. It puts it where it wants to put it. You have to uh, drag it down to the position you want. So let me do that little cleaner this time. I'm going to add a text box. Here's the text box. And I can drag it to either of the facing pages. And by clicking in it, it brings up the, the box here with the uh, that I can enter the text in. If it's too big for the thing, you can simply select it and reduce. Whoops, I'm not doing real well on this one, but anyhow, 
uh, you can basically reduce the size of the text. Okay. And again, change the color, change whether it's bold or italic, change the alignment, uh, change whether the text is at the top, middle, or bottom of this text box. Uh, and auto fit will force it to, to fit within the, the parameters of the box. That sort of answer your question? Okay. I'm gonna exit out and not save this <laughs> since I don't want to rebuild the, 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 the book. Um, let me let me walk you through. <clears throat> Do you have a question, anyone? Oh, Let's I got another one, Jonathan. Oh. Me? Okay. I had some scrapbooks, and if I scan those, about like twelve by twelve, and I put them in Shutterfly, will they shrink them to fit on one of those pages? Um, they they will adjust the photo. It may crop it more than what you want, but it will adjust the photo. What what kinds of images, what have you got in the scrapbook that you want to include? Just a lot of pictures, but I don't want to save those old scrapbooks. They're kind of falling apart. And, oh, okay. Um, okay, so you're, you're saying you have some photos in an old scrapbook. Mm -hmm. Okay, the best thing, <coughs> excuse me, is to scan that, scan each one of them, and then you can place them as you want. Oh, okay. Scan them. Scan them. Scan them first and do, say again. Scan first uh, to your hard drive and then upload them to Shutterfly. Okay. The, do I, if I have several pictures on there, I just scan the whole sheet. I do them individually. I do one at a time. Gloria, you had a question? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes. My questions are um, about um, backgrounds and embellishments. And um, I have a bunch of scrapbooking paper that I had bought when I thought I was going to do scrapbooking, but I would like to scan those and then use those as a background on the page and then superimpose a picture on that or maybe use a diploma and then superimpose the grad picture on top of that. So can you layer, I guess is what I'm saying, your own stuff and not use their backgrounds that I saw they provided? Never used uh, a background that was not theirs. Uh, it could be possible, and I can check. Uh, it may be possible to upload that. At worst, you could simply uh, capture it, well, scan the, the background, Load it as a photo and then yes. put another photo on top. That's what I thought. If I asked, could you put a picture on top? And the other question then was, where did you get the embellishments that you used on um, the wedding book? And how did you superimpose those on? Okay. It's really a matter of just clicking and dragging them on. Uh, so let me open this up again. Here, here are the, let's, let's just take a quick look at backgrounds and see if there's an option here. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm get more backgrounds. I've never done this, so I'm just checking. They have 4,000 of them. They probably don't think I need to download my own. Yeah, I was kind of hoping they might have an option for you to actually load your own, but I, unless it's at the very end, I don't see it, but I don't know if I've ever gotten to the end of their list of backgrounds. You can see <laughs> variety of what's, what's out there. There may actually be one that is close to, you know, what you're interested in. So, right. So anyhow, I, so I'm, I'm not sure there's a way to import it, although you can put a picture on top of the picture. Uh, as far as the embellishments go, let's go a couple of pages in. And if we go to the embellishments, uh, okay. you've got all these embellishments here on the side. Uh, and I'm so again, gonna... you use their embellishments. Yes. You don't, you don't bring them up from your um, 
supply. Oh, no, it, it was theirs. Okay. Uh, and you can see, I just moved that together onto the page uh, and you can click and drag to, to place it. Anyways. Right. Here are some of the other ones that, uh, that I used. And again, it allows you to position it wherever you want. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Um, I should probably show you, assuming my voice holds out here. Uh, when you go to, to photo books, which is probably the, the main thing that most people use Shutterfly for, it gives you uh, a number of options. Uh, so let's just go to the photo, the photo books. I, I simply clicked on that option. The very top option is where you can basically create your own using your own style. The next one is an instant book, and they typically suggest, uh, well, it, it is aimed for like 20 photos, and they will actually put it together a little hard cover six by six one, uh, and they'll do it automatically. You have the option too of doing this make my book service. Now, normally, um, it costs $10 for the service. And within three days, they will send you uh, a link to take a look at what they are proposing, what their designers are proposing as a book for your photos. Right now it's free. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, there's not even a $10 fee. What I typically do is go up here and select from the browse styles, because I like to build my own. And here are some of the styles. Okay. Everyday Rustic, 2020 Year, uh, Travel Adventures, Travel gal Gallery, Beach Bliss, you know, all of these. Uh, I'm gonna go down to Pet Lover and simply show that right off the bat, there's, they're suggesting an eight by 11, but you can take it down to an eight by eight. You can take it up to a 12 by 12. Now, in the larger sizes, the only option is hardcover. If you want a soft cover, uh, that's an option like on the 8, 11 by 8. Just in case. There are, these are standard sizes that are available. And they have standard pages, but they also have stayed flat pages. The cost, and with our current discount, uh, you can see what the cost is right now. So I'm going to just do a 10 by 10, and I'm gonna choose that style and leave it as a soft cover. <clears throat> and they're basically telling me, uh, you've got 100% flexibility, you can, uh, it's fully editable, uh, we're gonna get started. And what they've done is assume the most recently uploaded photos are the ones that I want to use. But notice I can upload from the desktop here. I can get it from my mobile device. I can go to Shutterfly Photos. So these are all photos that I have previously uploaded to Shutterfly. So if I select that option, you can see the date that each one has been uploaded. Okay. If I want to uh, upload more, and I'm going to, I'm going to upload from my desktop. And what I did was, if I can find it here, created a folder with pets, just like I told you I, I was going to do before. If I open that folder, you can see these all are generally pets. Uh, I'm going to go back up, select that folder, and say, I want to open it. And then I can select all of these photos and open. And now it's gonna add those photos. So in other words, you're further ahead if you have all the, the photos in a single folder for you to upload. Yeah, that would be better. All the bios and photos, yeah. It's, it's telling me that my book is all set. It's actually built uh, it for, for preview. 
Um, and I can clear it if I want and start re-editing. <clears throat> I don't know if we want those in separate folders. So here are, here's how they have put together you know, the, uh, okay. And inside, and notice on each of these, I can add text. Okay. So they will actually make, um, make the book for you, but you then have the option to rearrange. Notice right now, it, it, said, it shows two pictures that were not used. I'm gonna say, I wanna see all the ones in here, which then gives me the option to scroll through these photos and substitute one picture in place of another. Now, the one, one tip I'll give you is that if you see a little red exclamation mark next to a photo, it means that the resolution is too low. It may be something that you have um, gotten off of uh, you know, a friend's Facebook page or whatever, but somehow or other, that image is, is, is too low. You can still print it, but it may be a little pixely. It may not be, it may be uh, not as clear as you want. Here's our embellishments. You can drag these up and resize them. And I'm just doing kind of a nonsensical one just for the heck of it. So, and then if you're done, you can remove it if, if it's not what you really want. Okay. So here you can see the photos, 22 photos. Here's uh, uh, the backgrounds. I can change backgrounds on any one of these pages. Uh, I'm not sure the cat likes the dog bones as a background, but, but that's an option. Okay. And if we want to add text, we can um, do that. And I'm going to make it uh, 18 point. My typing and my spelling are not the best, but at least, you know, we get the idea. And we can even reposition that. That's not Bell, but it obviously is going to show better on, on a lighter background. Okay. Questions? When you, you can go in and experiment around uh, with projects and notice that I now have this untitled book here. Um, I can do several things with it. I can in this particular case, I'm just going to delete it. But for any project I've got, I can select it and share it via email or create a link or share it to Facebook. Uh, and if I enter in a, uh, an email address here, it will send an email message to the person who can then click on the link and see the, the project. How many years have you been using this project, uh, this software? Um, I think, I think it's been probably no more than two to three years. Okay. I just wondered, you're quite the expert with all the aspects of it. It's a very powerful piece of software. Amazing piece of software. Well, I'm, to be honest, I'm, I'm still a novice because there are so many things out here I have not done with it. Uh, I haven't made cards or stationery, so I haven't used prints. And I think uh, Dick Stein may have used the print capability here to create posters that he uses, or he may go through Costco. I'm not sure, but it may be Shutter, uh, Shutterfly. Uh, but I've, it's been kind of handy for, for some of the gifts that I wanted to give to friends, the puzzles and uh, calendars and mugs and that sort of thing. Jonathan, are you using a Mac or a PC, or does it make any difference with Shutterfly? It doesn't make any difference. It's a web-based tool. I'm using a, a PC. I'm using a desktop PC. There are a few, I've noticed one or two items, I can't think of what they are right offhand, but on an iPad, there are a few limitations on Shutterfly, but 
but not much. I mean, pretty much you can do anything on, on a tablet as well as a desktop unit or a, a laptop. Thank you. I think I have another suggestion for you that's probably a different session. Sure. And that is on scanning and cropping and having getting our photos prepared to do yeah. something like this. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, a, that's a little harder to do on Zoom, although I probably need to think about it, see if there's a way to, to effectively do that. I, um, just so you know, I, I use several methods. Um, there's a tool that Microsoft puts out that's free for your iPhone uh, or your Android. It's called uh, Photoscan. And so I use Photoscan. Um, and it allows you to take a picture. And you can even take a picture through glass because what it does is it, it has four dots on the screen and you literally move around to take the photo at different angles, it merges them together so it avoids the glass glare that you would normally have. Uh, I have an Epson printer that is also a scanner. Uh, and most, uh, I think most, print, you know, dot matrix printers nowadays are scanners also. Right. So that's, that's HP. another option. I have an HP printer that is also a scanner. And that's what I've been using with my MacBook, but I'm sure there's lots more I need to know about how to make that work best. Well, there are a lot of settings because uh, you can you can save those images from the Epson or the HP or whatever printer scanner you're using. You can save them uh, as a PDF file, as a JPEG, as a uh, PNG or PNG file. Um, and so you, you have a lot of options there. Just so you know, I, I used to always scan to JPEG. Now I scan to PNG because they, you, if you edit it and save it and edit it and save it again, and edit it and save again, it doesn't lose resolution like a JPEG will. So, um, but there, you know, there are lots of tools to scan nowadays, you know. And you can, I'm, a lot of these tools are available on your iPad or uh, Android tablet as well as on your phone. Any other questions? I have a question about, um, do, they, do they ever give you an option to print on something other than what's in their, uh, in their oh. warehouse? Um, well, I'm not, no. I think the answer is no, but the good news is that all their papers, as far as I can tell, all their papers are archival. You have an option of matte finish or glossy finish, or uh, there's a third option, um, kind of a silky uh, or a textured paper. So they, they have multiple options for most of these books. In fact, we didn't go all the way through on the, the book, but there are so many different options. You can, you can pay a little extra, have them take the Shutterfly logo off of the, the inside back of the cover. You can pay for a dust cover. You can have a photo within a frame on the front. Um, you can have it be a stay flat photo book or one that's a normal one that, you know, normally doesn't really lay flat. Um, it, it goes on and on. There are many, many, many uh, options all the way through. But it's all that that is in their inventory. It's not like I've got a, a tray. It's a, uh, Phil Wegman had pointed out I brought a tray to a wine tasting and they had a, a vintage photo on it of these women, Italian women picking grapes or olives, I forget. Uh, grapes, yeah. <laughs> so in a special tray, you know, that's probably not in their inventory. Yeah, that that's true. That's true. It would be... Um all material they have. Now they do, I mean, if you look under their gifts area, you'll find all sorts of strange things, key, key rings and little uh, step stools. And, um, you know, they, I think there are actually some, I think they can do ties too, if I remember right. I'm oh, goodness. Positive, but there's there are quite a variety. What is the tiny print that's on that? It's right up there with the name on the product. 
Is that a, just so you can do real tiny printing or is there something magical about it? Oh, um, tiny prints is, is kind of a, um, I think it's their, let's go back to it. I, I think it's their photo printing uh, option. Uh, I'm trying to get back to my screen here. Uh, what did I do with it? Well, hold on a second. I think I may have closed. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Tiny Prince's is, whoops. Well, they're gonna pop up and give you all these discounts all the time. But it's basically little prints, different kinds of prints that you can do uh, for every day, for every occasion. including, you know, greeting cards and thank you cards and, and all that. It, it's just their um, companion business, basically. Other questions? Thank you, first of all. Okay, well, thank you all for coming. I hope that's helpful. We're I'll, I'll uh, get this posted so you can go back and review it uh, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. So go, go forth and make photo books or mugs or calendars or anything <laughs> exciting you want to make. You got somebody raised your hand, Janet. Or oh, Janet. Yeah. Janet. Oh, yeah. 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 How much does that calendar cost? The individual calendar. Um, I think that particular one costs me in the range of 21 22 $23. Okay. So every one is different. Every uh, I didn't give prices because almost everything you do can either raise or lower the price. So good. Excellent. Thank you very much, Jonathan. That was fantastic. Thank you. Uh, thank thanks. you all. Thank you for coming. Have a See good afternoon. Later.